when you're a radical historic important video i'll give you an update on preview of the portland state weber state home opener tomorrow six o'clock here at nuclear u so as you know i've been involved with 88.1 the beat decades you know every time they got in trouble i would do the play-by-play -play for basketball and football forever you know, well, in 2011, I got leukemia, death sentence. You know, there was a few of us here, including the golf coach. Of course, I've been blackballed. There's the signal for 88.1, the beat, KWCR. So the Board of Regents, which was a bunch of scumbags, in 2011, while well, I'm in the bone, they never got away with it, sold off... The inf well, the famous, famous investigative journalist, the 24-7 incredible radio station that so many of us worked so hard to build up for so long. That incredible. I mean, how we got the big signal, all the investigative journalism, that legendary record collection, 24-7 radio. They sold it off. Why would they do such a fucking thing? Yeah, well, they hate investigative journalists. You know, here in Weber County, the most corrupt place in the world. They don't want to be exposed for what the fuck they are. College radio, just more of a getting rid of. And so, here's the great news. We're back. I've been working on Brad Mortensen twisting his arm. I, as you know, I've been working hard on this. So we went digital when I got out of the house with one of me and Manny Gonzalez. And we were kicking their ass. There were more people listening to us than they were. KLO, which is now 103.1 The Wave. And as you know, the legend, Steve Clocky was killed, hit by a car up by his home and dead. So they brought Arky out of the archives. And, you know, he's old now. Him and Grayville, the old timers, and they're old. They're doing it. So we're back. I just got this news. Weber State finally ponied up and bought the signal back. So they're back. So I talked to the, they haven't done sports since they got rid of Manny Gonzalez and Kevin Blanche, you know, five years ago, four years ago. So, you know, we podcasted it, Kevin and I. So, you know, they never put us in a booth. I did the main game right there. And they put the main gaze up there, but not us. They put us in the end zone, and they knew I was full of leukemia. On a table back there, how can you do a play-by-play -play from the back of the end zone trying to make You can't. I mean, so, and then it was full cancer. It was cold. So when they got upset, they got beat by Maine in that cold. Oh, it was fucking cold. So get this. I talked to the new young man that's going to do sports. He's good, too. He's smart. I like him. And then, of course, Gabe... Kevin and I have been prepping him up. He's the new sports writer for the signpost. Well, these guys have finally woke up. And they gave him sports credentials. They're going to be in the booth. It's a big deal. I think he'll do an excellent job. I talked to him. He knows his shit. So it's a it's another major accomplishment by Kevin Lynch. Chalk up on all my major, the most accomplished activists in modern American history. So it's a big deal. There's the signal. It used to be right there. We even got it expanded. That was so much work. So many great people. 88.1 The Beat. Katie Bissard did for so many years. So, they're back. I'm excited. They're going to get their first call tomorrow from the booth. So, tune in. You know, they're digital right now, but the signal will be up soon, from what I understand. You know, they sold it for... 100,000 and the attorneys from understand got 75, 80,000. It was an inside job. Scumbags. Dirty as dirty. Those Board of Regents creeps were on that. Hey, good on you because I'm going to call you punks out. You know, no changes are permanent. And I've been twisting Brad Mortensen. He's an ex-flow. I've been really working him hard, as you know. And he, Kev, you got your way. We're buying it back. So, and then the signpost, which they've always done good work. You know, remember the moose story? That was them who broke the, my moose story. Because it was Phil Good Fairdale, KSL from hell. Here's something people don't understand about Weber State Athletics. 
and you don't think we have athletes? How about seven guys in the NFL off the same team? I'm not talking over off the same team. TJ, Tron Johnson, who they lost every game, he was marquee in this turnaround. He's the only one that was drafted. You know, and that's because a linebacker coach had a link in Buffalo and they took him away late, the highest paid nickelback in the history of the NFL. But Rashid Chahid, Opetta, Jonah Williams, Winston Reed. And by the way, Winston Reed got cut, but that's the same thing they did to – he's on the practice squad. He's not cut. He's under contract. In the NFL, you can bring two guys up off the practice squad. I mean, by the way, Rashid Shahid is still playing for the league minimum on the practice squad contract. And did I not tell you he had the best hands in the NFL? Who's the first? There's only two interviews ever with Rashid Shahid. Why he played here? There's only two. I interviewed him both times, right there. Did I not tell you he'd be a superstar in the NFL? Huh? Who called that out? And by the way, when are you guys paying up on the bet on Dylan Jones all over here? I had hundreds of bets, a stake at the timber mine, and nobody's paid. Oh, he ain't going first round. I says, oh, he. Go. I talked to Sam himself at the summer league, the guy who drafted. Him, he says, oh, we would have took him in the top fucking ten if we were just laying there. Wait, five second round draft picks, five, five for a twenty. They we're just waiting. And he'll be a superstar in the NBA. Who called that out? So, you know, KWCR, they missed it. Everybody missed the great era, the 2011 to 2023, 20, 24 era with these incredible athletes. Remember, every one of those said athletes, I said, Jonah Williams, Mr. Opetta, Stansbury High School, Rashid Shahid, Williams, Adam Rodriguez. All these marquee players. How about Clark, who uh, won the MVP in Germany? All on the same team. Do you know that every single one of those said players got one scholarship offer? One. In the country. One. One. Right here. Jay Hill, Weber State. So, Jay Hill's moved on, and he took Collins. We love Collins. I saw, and of course, the great BMX bike rider, Jack Kelly. I interviewed him a bunch of times, talked to him. He was the leading tackle for BYU last week. And Marky Collins is all that. Uh, what a great player. And there BYU. Of course, Jumpin' Jack, as I call him, that great, great punter. He's a Texas Tech. And of course, who might be the greatest athlete in the history of this field. Rashid Shahid who I named Lightning after Lightning struck the booth at the University of Utah after he ran the kickoff back. Well, because I had a light thunder. Abraham Williams. Abraham Williams is at Idaho. Now, I believe Idaho will win the big sky. I think they've got a good chance to win the national championship. Abraham Williams, of course, here, West High School. So his backfield partner, Clarence Butler, is on this team. You seen him return kicks? So I got a bet between him and Abe, which one gets the, you know, just a gentleman's handshake. You know, who gets the first kick return? Butler's. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So let's get a preview of this game. Portland State gave up 70 points against Washington State, but they all scored sort of 30. Now, Weber State, they went up to University of Washington and just ground it out. Oh, there's Kev right there. And they cannot... They cannot do what they did up there to Banks. What'd they do? Run him 20 times? What are you trying to do? Break him down again? I mean, that was ridiculous. He's all that. But they have five great backs. They have Givens, the world-class sprinter from San Diego. By the way, who had open time? Me and him was comparing stars. Crosstown rival over Sheet Shahid. Oh, he's all that. They have AC from Texas, who's a dynamite player. I mean, he's... he's I mean, he... He runs like a, I mean, he's a beast. They have Butler, use them all. You can't run him. And then Vi got a high sprang ankle. I talked to him. I don't think he'll play, but they'll be fine offensive line. Now, Richie, well, they didn't even let him throw down the field, which I don't get it. We'll see. They've got to run to, th to throw, but they got to throw to run. 
So I don't know what the point spread is. Do you know what the point spread is? No. Somebody told me Weaver was favored by seven. I, now, I don't know. Favored. I know Weaver's favorite, but I don't know if I can lie. That sounds about right to me. They can't be too big of a favorite. I wouldn't think. No, I don't think they're too big of a favorite. But here's the thing. Everybody thinks that Portland State's going to be a pushover? They won't. <laughs> You're dreaming. They put on 30 against Washington State. Granted, they gave up 70, but they still put on 30. Right. So, these linebackers did not play well up there at Washington. No, they didn't. They gashed them. The DBs played damn good, making all the tackles. Jalen Rock was leading tackler, wasn't he? I think so. And then, you know, whoever it looked good. So, their DBs looked good. Of course, we have the legendary Andre Dyson, right? Yep. Oh, you know he's going to be right. That, that's a great coach. And then, er, uh, excuse me, there's a phrase, not Urban Meyer. Oh, God, I mean, that was a coach at University of Utah. We were just talking about that on that. You talking Two, about Kyle Whittingham? No, we were talking about Coach Myers, the offensive line coach here. Oh, Brent, Brent Myers. He'll have him ready. So the thing that concerns me, Kev, really concerns me, is how they ran Bankson into the dirt in the first half. Yeah, that, that also is... They can't do that again, and they cannot do that for the whole season. So I got good news. I haven't told you yet. Wait till you hear this. Guess what's back? 88.1 the beans. Uh, on air? They're going to be. Oh, cool. So cool. you know, that I've been, is good news. I've been working and working on Mortensen hardcore. I'm like, you assholes. And Paul, all these. You know, I'm like, uh -huh. what's the matter with you? Pray? They bought the signal back. That is good. Well, you're the one that... Grew it. Well, I know. I mean, I was on the, the committee when we got the FCC to expand our, from we, we uh, from 100 watts to 3,000. Now, they never did get to 3,000, but because of that, because of the work we did, they did get up to 1,000, which means they were available all the way from Brigham or Tremont to Salt Lake. And we were huge. We were the number two FM station in the freaking country. Of course, they pulled it, so it's back. And get this. Wait till yeah. you hear this one. I talked. His name's Jackson. He's a smart kid. He's going to do the play-by-play -play for the first time since you and I did it. Oh, when, cool. Like in the booth. Oh, that's even better. They never put me in the booth. I, they might have you in the yeah, day. Yeah, I was in the I was in the booth back in when I did it in the 80s. Well, you know where they put me. Yeah, I know. For the main game, you were down there in the end zone. Actually, just beyond the end zone. Fuckers. In that... Uh, Freezing cold. Upset. So, anyway, it's big, big news. So, Morton says, Blanche, well, you got your way. We bought it back. So, 80.1, the beat's going to be back. It's a big, big deal. And then, Oh, it is a big deal. People don't realize how valuable a an FM radio st signal is. They, And, you know, like I say, I mean, we had it, and then... Uh, they were going to get the TV studio and TV 20 to yeah. switch the frequencies. Frequencies. They were going to put like millions, I, I believe, I heard figures around 20 million or so, but I'm not positive, you know, to the same. But Rodney Brady. Oh, don't get me going killed, on that. Oh, I know. That crook. He, killed it, he killed the deal. And then re, the, I mean, this is. You know what, the by the way, faculty advisor the school's ever had for the John Peterson, the old voice yeah, of the Wildcats. Yeah, Cats, he was so awesome. He was awesome. They, he raised questions about it, and he pointed out the comp, uh, connection between Ron, Rodney Brady and then Rodney Brady leaving here, but he never told anybody where he was going, and then they find out it was to Bonneville International, owner of KSL. That's why he squelched it, because he didn't want – Fox having the competition with a VHF channel to KSL. You know who broke that story? 88.1 The Beat. I anyway, know. poor Brigham, they, they basically ran Rodney Brady out of this town. Oh, I remember that. I Because I was on the, I was at KWCR during that time period. You know, and I remember, you're right, the, 80, the KWCR did break the story. and We run him out. And you know who else? The other story that we, I broke when I was a student professor and I was consulting with them. You know who else? During the TV station era, the corruption of Ann Milner. Oh, we outed that. Remember the tram was going to go through Weber State, the greenwashing bus here uh -huh. that we have now 26 years ago. And it was going up here. And there was a backdoor deal to kill it. 
you know who broke the story on the backdoor deal? 88.1, the deal. And it's a backdoor deal. Yeah, see, with that him. was after my time. I was yeah. already. That was in 98, day. 99 when. Yeah, I was in Korea at that time. By the way, you know who knows all this? You. Well, yeah, and <laughs> so does Ben, the new mayor of Ogden. People forget he played defensive end on that 98, 99 team. Me and him are but He was good, too. Yeah. He was here when all this corruption was going down. And so. Well, it's nice. It's nice to have somebody in the mayor's office that's not totally corrupt. Yeah, because Godfrey. I mean, Godfrey oh. did some. I mean, he didn't do shit. Small, but, I, but he was corrupt. Oh yeah. I mean, it, uh, I, I remember he wanted to build that Walmart, and you know, two blocks down from where it was, and he was going to give all this stuff, and the voters voted it down. Yeah. And then he says, "Well, we'll never see that." And what was it? It wasn't three months later that they Walmart announced that they were building, you know, where they're at now. Do you know I taught with him here at Weber? We were both student professors in the number one school business. Do Godfrey? Country. Yeah, me and Godfrey taught for together. You know, and I don't know when he ran. But anyway, so that's big, big freaking news around here. The history of KWCR. Oh, it's giant news. There's the old signal. So here's the other thing. Gabe went up. We've been prepping Gabe. Yeah. And he went to Washington. And he's great. He's gonna. He's the sports beats writer now for the signpost. Sign post. He's awesome. This Daxon kid, I talked to. Him, he's no dummy. He knows his shit. So it's a big turnaround here, because we've had nothing. You had you and I, and they, you know how we get sequestered and they go after us. They hate us. But anyway, well, the thing is, is when I was on, uh, I was sports director for three years, and when they finally. You know, went out and aggressively sold underwriting for KWCR. Yeah. 10,000 of it was for sports. Nice. <laughs> 10,000 of it was for sports when I was sports director. And that tells you that businesses knew people were listening to KWCR. Oh, shit. Our ratings were number two in the state, only behind 105 point, uh, 103.5, which were local guys started that way back in the deal. We beat the shit out of KL. With KLO, you know, there's 103.1 yeah. now, but we used to, people weren't listening to him, they listened to us, you know, for years because we called it like it was. So it's back, and I told him we'll help any way we can, you know. And yeah, I mean, we had it, I mean, we had a 100 watt station, and we were still competing with them. And that was back in the days when they had, uh, you know, J John had left by that time. Yeah. But they had Don Spainauer, who oh, was, he was awesome. That day, Don was great. He was one of my faves. I loved and him. And then later, uh, I can't remember if I was still there when Carl Larkey came on board for KLO or whether it yeah. was after or whether that was Carl clear was back after. in '98 when he came on board. Okay, it was way after then. Yeah, that was a, I was there from '84 to '88. And Grant, I like Larkey, but he's old, and so is Grayville, but so are you and I, but. <laughs> We're a different kind. Of, oh, by the way, do you know what? Have you heard this story about what happened at the Raptors game last night? Well, I saw your I saw your Facebook post. Jesus, I I, I decided I thought about going to the Raptors game last night, but I decided to watch, watch the, the football uh, game, Kansas City and the Ravens, which, by the way, was an excellent game. So I'm sitting there right over here. My grandson doesn't live far, you know, downtown Ogden. I'd been to a soccer. Game. Come on, Grandpa, we got to watch a game together. You know, la 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 la. You know, because. He likes Lamar Jackson. Who don't? And so we're watching the game. I'm like, no, I'm going to Raptors game, man. I ain't missing. He says, they suck. I says, I know they suck, but I still like it there. Blah, blah. I'm going to go. No, no, no. Say so halftime. They had, they had a half home, uh, no hitter from what I understand. Yeah. So halftime, I bolt. Uh -huh. I go down there. It's the top of the sixth. I look up there, and you know how it is. That, uh -huh. I mean, they give up 50 runs a night and 35 errors. It's been pitiful. And so I look up and I walk in the stadium. I says, no, all zeros. And so I walk in and I'm asking everybody in the stadium, who started? Who started? There ain't 200, 300 people there. Oh, I'm asking the general manager there. Not Baggett, but what's his name? Who started? I, I don't know. You know, it was Mitchell Stone. Uh -huh. Who almost had he one last stone. year. He must have been stoned, huh? Uh, he's a good pitcher. <laughs> He was a, he oh, got, Mitchell Stone. Oh, he was the pitch. He was the starting pitch. Yeah, I think the rest of them were Stone. I thought you were talking about the other general manager. Well, I think he was Stone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wish I was. But anyway, so I walk in there and I'm asking everybody, is it? No, that's scoreboard drama. 
and I didn't know, but I guess there was a bunch of walks. He walked the bases full twice, but he struck them out. So I'm following along, and then here comes the next pitcher, and I'm like, I don't ever recall, so I did a bunch of work on this today. Mm -hmm. So I video the ninth inning, and I thought that there'd never been a no-hitter in the history of the Raptors. I wasn't sure. So Baggett at the end announces first no-hitter in the history. That's a big deal. It is a big deal. 31 years. And so there was, wasn't was 200 of us. And I, I lucky I, I had just enough juice on my camera because uh -huh. it was about dead. And I got it. And then I hurried and ran out to the field. And I know Mitchell. He's a great kid because I talk guy. He ain't a kid. They're grown men. Anyway, I says, hey, hey, hurry. You guys hurry and line up. And I had them all four sign my ticket. Mm -hmm. And I stood up and got some pictures. And then they bolted. So I don't think so. You know, Heim, I'm not a fan of the standard examiner's work. I really not. Yeah. They're. I mean, they, where were they? Well, they're never on Johnny on the spot. So hopefully KWCR can pick up the slack. And because it's this important, Kev, I was just talking about the, the only two interviews in the history of Weber State football, really, why the season one was happening with Rashid Shahid are the ones you and I did yep. down there. And so calling out Rashid. Yeah, by that time, KWCR was basically off the air for sports. Right. And signpost. Oh, they were. They didn't have. They didn't that, have a sports writer, really. They didn't really have a sports writer then. I mean, that's why I'm excited with Gabe now. Yeah. Who, who's good? Oh, he's brilliant. And young if guy. KWCR comes back online and they have somebody to do the play-by-play, -play, that means that They'll, all these other outlets are going to have to step their game up. That means these players are going to get some publicity finally. So yep. I told Sharp. He says, I took a while to figure you out, Kev, but he says, you got to call I I says, listen, dude, I'm not a fan of coaches. I tell every one of these coaches the same thing. Mm -hmm. I was here when you fucking got here. I'll be here when you fucking leave. They think it's their team. It's all that. How many coaches have we seen come and gone in our life here? The shitload. Part oh. of the terminology, but it is shitload. Right. And so I'm about the student athlete. Someone's got to promote the student athlete. And if it wasn't for us promoting Rashid Shaheed, Dylan Jones, Damn you know, man. To a certain Jonah Williams, you know, who's going to promote him? Nobody, because KSL, you know, Gordon Monson shows up on year four at the end of the season for Dylan Jones. Hello, fuckhead. He's been here for four years. Mm -hmm. So that's we the power of college we radio. We were prom promoting Dylan from his freshman year on. Same with Rashid Shahid. From, I did the play by play in his first game. Oh, I know. And so here's the thing so these players are going to get some love finally. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about coaches. They're overpaid. They make enough money. They get their own. I mean, it's ridiculous how much they make. Well, it is. I mean, I looked on the, they had a thing on their, the most, the highest paid profession in most states. It's all coaches. In Utah, football coach. Yeah. And I think in about 30, about 30 of the 50 states, it football. was football coaches. Yeah. And then about half of the ones that weren't football coaches, basketball, basketball coaches. Yeah, well, Winningham makes overpaid. Winningham what five six million dollars a year, and what's he ever won? So you can run down to the University of Utah tomorrow and spend your. You know what I heard? They raised the standing old tickets tomorrow too. No, I, I, I don't know if this is true. I heard three hundred. It's possible. Them fuckers. You know no, what's, they, what's a ticket here? The most expensive ticket here is thirty five. The good seat. By the way, we sit over there. We don't sit with these yuppity asses over here. Oh, and by the, I mean, better deal if you're willing to sit in the general mission seats, which are really the best seats anyway. Best seat in the house. Uh, Bank of Utah. Oh, God. Don't let them scumbags. I picked, them up. I picked them up today. You did? Four free tickets. Oh, we're in like sin. An, which means I have an extra one for you if you want. So <laughs> they said they're going to quit doing hard tickets, but I don't know. I got them printed on paper. Oh. So at least I have a print. I couldn't get it on the phone. It wouldn't send it on so, the phone. But the over and under I've got on. Uh, I got a. I got a not where you can legally bet. Just a friendship bet. I got is who runs the kickoff back first? Which West High's backfield? The West High's quarterback or the West High's tailback? Abraham Williams is the West High quarterback. Quarterback in uh, Idaho. Who? Clarence Butler is the West High tailback. And they're buddies, and I got a bet between the two who gets the first one in the big sky this year. I, I mean, I got a hunch they both might tomorrow. So I don't think this is going to be a pushover this game. No, it's not. And I think it's going to be telling. Richie's got to step up his game. Absolutely. And But I think he will. I don't know. But 
Bankston's all that, but they cannot run him 20 times in one half and break no. him down. No, you it's can't. Ridic- How many? We have five great backs here. Yep. Great backs. I mean, I mean uh, Godley's a freshman, but he's still really good. He is good. And then after fr- Godley, I mean, if you have a couple of injuries, you got Clarence Sylvester, who was three and a half, three and a half or four stars, three and a half stars, I believe. Yeah. Uh, rating from California, and he's not bad. He had, no, he's Godley's good. Looked better than than Sylvester has, but Sylvester does not look bad. No, he's looked good. So, I mean, they've got six bats that they can depend on this year. You don't want to give, you don't want to break down Bankston. Yeah. And you know, a season. Over the whole season. Well, a season animal. Uh huh. So is uh, the sprinter from San Diego, Gibbons. Yeah. So anyway, so hopefully they spread the ball around, and hopefully they're able to move it, which I think they will. And uh, buys out. What I'm hoping, what I'm hoping is uh, because they had one of the other the assistant coaches calling plays that's kind of inexperienced. Yeah. I think that he hopefully. Either make it, they'll get him to use everybody, or that Mickey will stop calling well, the play. Here's the himself. thing with Mickey. Mickey Mantle brought here as the offensive guru. I says if he's an offensive guru, I'm Don Air Coriel. But we know the team's built around Bankston. Yep, I fully so, and it was last year. But he's got to be better at play calling than he was last year. Better at play calling and better at spreading it. Now, of course, last year they didn't have that many backs to spread the ball. Yeah, injuries. Of injuries. We'll give them that. a break because of injuries. But this year they do. And using Bangston 20 times in the first half in a, in a game like Washington, which... It's ridiculous. You know, which you know you're really not probably not going to win. Yeah. That was ludicrous. Right. They lost... Uh, and I'm not referring to the singer. <laughs> that's, I think, probably why they lost by in that upper screen at the end of the game. He's out. He's got an upper freaking ankle I sprain. I talked he, to him. So, he's going to be out for this. Well, week. when you run, right, then they run right behind him. He's their yep. best offensive lineman. And, I mean, <laughs> you get tired, and that's why it happened. Yep. So, I look for this game to be a shootout. I don't know what the over-under is, but I would be taking the over. Because these linebackers are young and experienced. They'll be better. The DBs, and granted, Washington's got that incredible back, but he just gouged them. And uh, they got the great defensive line, but they can't make all the tackles. That's what linebackers are for. And this young linebacker core. Now, they got the beast, Bailey. Yeah. And Minnie Me, Jay Hill Minnie Me, who I call Duff. Well, I love Duff. Don't get me wrong. I really love Duff. <laughs> that crazy. I love him. But anyway, he's got that edge that he plays Adam Rodriguez style that he got from Jay Hill where – they bring. He really looks like a linebacker, but they yeah. play him a defensive end. Well, they got two of those guys. They're very capable. I, I really always thought, believe both of them should be linebackers. You know, the beast, the transfer. Oh, he's good. He's, yeah, he's really good. And especially then, especially when you're weak at linebacker this year. Yeah, and Bryant. Use use, uh, B, Bailey. Bailey and Bryant at linebacker. That's so right. That, that strengthens up the linebacker core. They're both excellent athletes, and they're both good, really good. And so, but this young linebacker core, and they're young, you know, they'll, they'll get better. And uh, But on offense, Richie's got to prove himself. Yep. He's got to step up his game, and I think he's very capable. You know, and they got – and so, Sharp. They, You know the player that I don't talk about, and he's impressing me more every day at practice, and I'm like, this guy is a freak. This guy – is impressed me as much as the first time I ever saw Rashid Shaheed. The first time I ever saw Rashid Shaheed was right here. Oh, I sent him to no Yeah. That dude is unbelievable. I can't believe he's here. He is that fucking good. And he's, they're not using him. That's what's more amazing to me. He's the fastest guy on this team. Is he's not I was talking used. to Butler. You know how fast Butler yeah, he's, is. he's a freshman, but he's... Oh, he's... But, you know, Butler played on his seven-on-seven seven team. Uh-huh. And he says, I'll tell you... He says, we just killed everybody all over the country. Nobody could touch us. And he says, he told me, he says, you know how fast I am? And I says, oh, yeah, you're fast. And he says, I couldn't even make that offense on the Saturday. I had to play defense. And so, no, because I watch him. Oh, he is a freak athlete. And we know what he did in high school. Mm-hmm. Get him on the field. There's Coach Myers right there. So, I guess they're getting ready for their walkthrough. But what do you? what's your prediction on the game, Kev? 
I think it's going to be, I, I agree with you, it's going to be high scoring. I think Weber's going to win it, but I don't think they're going to, I think a lot of the fans think they're just going to walk all over them, but I agree with you, they're not. I don't think so. It's going to be, it'll be close, but it'll be high scoring. I think it'll be fun. One thing, the thing about Big Sky football that people underestimate is how competitive it is. All these teams are good, and they say, all oh, the university. Well, let me tell you, who could who's got six, seven guys in the NFL, including the superstar Rashid Shahid, off the same team? Now, last Not night, many. the Ravens had three of the University of Utah, two of those linemen, both. And when, and uh, either well, KC or the Ravens had a BYU guy, but well, yeah, one I, BYU guy. Yeah. So, and the NFL never drafts these guys. Well, you know why. Oh, I know. It's because. So they can keep them on the practice squad. How about a guy that's got the highest, do you know Rashid here, just like we said last year, had the, the, ra- the ratio they use for passes and catches? I don't know what it's called. Do you know the highest in the NFL last year was With Rashid? Rashid. Yeah, we do that. You know, oh, hold this camera. You, and I tell you, buddy, I'll show you why Rashid Shahid has the best hands in the NFL. There you go. Here, hold the camera, Kev. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys why Rashid Shahid has the best hands in the NFL. He's not just about speed because he watched Kevin Blanche flip that soup can. For years <laughs> I never dropped it in those days. So, but Rashid tra- catches catches it with two hands, not one. Right, which is what you should. And do. he's about uh, three seconds faster in a forty than me. <laughs> so, which means he's about ten seconds faster than me. So, <laughs> there's the signal. So, big news. So, here's my prediction. I predict it comes down to the last score. And I'm predicting 38-36. Weber. Think Weber can put that many points on the board? Yeah, I do. I think they're going to have to to win this game. So do I. I th- and, and I the DBs and the, and the D, DEs are going to play excellent. But it's linebackers that is the reason why Portland State could put over 30. Well, they put 30 on Washington State, like you said. And so I mean, Washington State's no Washington, but there's still no. But I mean, you got to remember, even though they're kind of competing in the Mountain West now, they are still a legitimate Pac-12 team, big time. And so I think I look for Sharp to have a big game. You know, and I think Richie will put up some numbers. And he's the one thing I like about Richie: he don't turn the ball over. Yeah. And so. That'll help them. And I look for some special team action out of Weber. Clarence Butler get one maybe. You know, or maybe in a good long punt return. Because Yar is returning punts in practice. Oh, is he, he He been doing that now? I've been watching him, and they run the 40. They sprint him. I'm telling you, he's the fastest guy on this team. You know, they, he didn't run against Bankston. You know how fast Bankston is. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Bankston's legitimate NFL material. Absolutely. So, all right. So, it's going to be a great year for Big Sky football, I think. Who are you picking to win the Big Sky? Oh, sorry. The uh, so-called experts have Montana. But Montana State, actually, Montana originally was ranked one spot ahead of Montana State. Not now. But they switched them. Yeah. Now Montana State's one spot ahead of Montana. And I watched uh, Montana against Southwest Missouri State. They're beatable. Montana State, in the first half, did not dominate it against Utah Tech. They did in the second. They wore him down. And they dominated in the second half. But the first half... Well, you know who played the best all of week one, by far, who I think is going to win it. They played excellent. I know. They had a chance to win that game. Oh, I know. Against Oregon. But they did lose their starting quarterback, and that, that's going to hurt. You think maybe Abraham Williams will get a starting? There's a rumor out there. I don't know if it's true, but I think I, Abraham Williams. I don't think Abraham Williams is going to start. I think they're going to start the other backup. Yeah, yeah. They already said that. And but yeah, he's I think good. Going to be. I think Abraham Williams is going to be listed as a backup. But then I think another reason why they don't want to start Abraham Williams is that if they start him at quarterback, they wouldn't may not be able to use him at some of the other positions, well, receiver or running 
running back. Well, I heard firsthand they, I heard firsthand that was part of the deal. Him going there, they gave him an offensive package. So, and he'll be, he'll get. He's he's going to the NFL. I'm here to tell you. Oh yeah, he is. All right, so good news, KWCR. I mean, so the 2011 to 24 era, which my cancer era. Uh -huh. Oh God, my open heart surgery era. What a great. Era for athletes at Weber State, huh? Oh, I know. Holy shit, what a great era. So hopefully they can keep going on even though Jay Hill's not here. By the way, are you rooting for BYU or Baylor? Or, I mean, Utah or Baylor tomorrow? Baylor. What about? I mean, I think, I. although I honestly, I think Utah will win. I like that. But, be, yeah. Can't, we went but, down there. Ryzen's, no, oh, he's all that. Oh, he I really know. is. He's good. What about uh, that stinky team down all the way south in Provo? What are they yeah. called? Why you? Uh huh. Something like that. Play SMU. So I think that I think that's going to be a good game. I think that I think that it's going to be. See who I the mean, lead. All the Zubies think BYU is going to plaster them, but I wouldn't be so sure. You see who the leading tackler was last week? Jack Kelly. Weber State. How about Collins? Collins is. Uh, so we got to hold our nose at roof for those two guys. Yep, but the rest of the the rest of them. Oh, did you happen to see what Jumpin' Jack did at TC or at uh, Texas Tech in his first game, the punter? No, I didn't. Me neither. I gotta look it up. So we'll be ready for it. So all right, go Weber, Big Sky Football. Well, I guess we got Oscar Boyle, which is I guess we can call him Jack Burgess too. Jumpin' Jack too. And actually, he looked pretty good. He, oh, he looked he excellent. Looked Looked really good against Washington. He's, you know, he never punted in his life, ever. You know, that's neither did Jack. I mean, they're Australian yeah. rule football player, but he's excellent. But so we'll root for him. But go Rashid. So has there been anybody? They didn't pop one on the new uh, kickoff rule, which I call the Rashid Shahid rule. Well, there's in the uh, preseason they did, but not in regular season. There's only no, been they, one uh, game. It's only been one game. I mean, the Eagles and so here's my Bat prediction. Yeah, and hopefully they don't get one there, but they might in Brazil. But Rashid plays the eleven o'clock early game. I predict Rashid he gets the first new kickoff rule touchdown, one of many. Because I don't give a shit. They kick it nine by the He ain't taking no fucking knee. <laughs> no, they're gonna have to kick it through the end zone if they're not gonna get a return by Shahid. Yeah. All right. Go Weaver. Stay in tune.